Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today will be the first day of 2020 that I have lit the forge. And for that momentous occasion, let's do a hook of the week because this video will actually show on Sunday, which is still a couple of days off. I chose out of the buckets of scrap that are out in the yard, buried in the snow, an old bolt. These were the bolts that held the big wooden cable spools together. Somebody left me a whole bunch of these in random sizes, random cut lengths, just all sorts of weird stuff. And I thought I would just use this however it is. It's about that big around, and it's about that long. Yeah, I know, you want better measurements than that. So it's just a hair under three-eighths of an inch, maybe nine millimeters in diameter, something like that. These things aren't in any real predictable diameter. They just kind of are what they are. And this one's about two feet long. This, this tape measure doesn't have metric on it, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. That is about that long. About an arm's length. How does that sound? Doesn't really matter. We're talking about ideas and concepts and techniques, not really exact how to do, how to reproduce something. So for today's hook, I'm going to be inspired by one we saw on the wall at a pizza place we go to in Denver sometimes. It's Proto's Pizza. They have several similar hooks hanging on the wall. I'm not sure who the blacksmith was that made them or I would give him credit. And I suspect they were probably somewhat mass produced just looking at the regularity of the hooks. They probably have jigs and make hundreds of these same hooks. But we'll do this with just a little bit of a difference because, eh, why not mix it up? I'm going to take the bolt head part of this and I'm going to try and forge that into a ball and make kind of a ball end hook. The rest of this will get tapered out and then scrolled up fairly tight. So this hook will have a nice big scroll at the top of it that's purely ornamental. And then it'll have a very simple hook on the end with a little ball end. We'll probably have to put some dimples in here to put screws in because this is fairly small and I don't want to drill a hole. So we'll dimple it to spread it out and then we'll have enough area to, to drill or punch a hole in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just deal with this. And I'm not going to worry about cold shuts too much making this into a ball. Odds are it's going to have a cold shut around where I just forged that integral washer in there. And probably at the end it's going to have a little bit of a cold shut. The big thing that I don't want is a cold shut right at the transition between the ball and the neck. That might create a weak spot. The rest of them won't. And in some ways, the little lines and variations add some character to the, the ball. We go to this little ball depression on this swedge block here. A little bouncy. Hopefully that hadn't bounced out of the camera range. And getting right up next to that shoulder is a little bit difficult. And some sort of a die for a purpose would be nice, but I don't, don't think I need to take the time to make that just for a one-off hook. Makes a pretty nice ball for the end of the hook. I think we'll probably do a little filing on it before we're all done just to clean it up and get rid of any leftover shoulder or cold shut that might have formed right in there. I can just clean some of that shoulder up right here very lightly. I keep changing the angle as I make each revolution here so that it's not forming a different shape other than a ball. And all the 
little facets from all these little hammer blows really look good on the ball ends like this. That's all I'm going to do for the ball end. I'm going to let that cool and turn it around. Now this material seems to be a little bit of an alloy steel that does get a little bit hard when you quench it. So I don't want to quench that to cool it off. That would probably break the ball off eventually. So I'm going to let it air cool instead. I just want to draw a long taper on the other end. And this is so thin, I think I'll just do it all at the face of the anvil. It goes pretty quickly. You can see that if I work the same area fairly quickly, it actually holds heat. It actually picked up some heat. It was getting hotter as I forged. So that end is pretty well done. I just want to work that back until I think it's a nice, graceful transition there. forged a square taper. Now I'm going to knock the corners off and go to an octagon. Then I'll take another heat and round this up. I'm happy with the very tip of this and I'll just keep working that back till it's all good and round. And how smooth of a taper you want here is really just up to what you're after in the long run because there probably will be very little hammer work throughout the rest of this. I'm not sure that I want this to be too heavily textured because I think it would look off with the smooth surface there. Although I suppose I could add some texture in there and that might help. Lots of aesthetic considerations you can go through here. It just depends on what you want to make your hook look like. Pretty happy with that. I think I will add just the slightest amount of texture to the rest of this bar just so it looks like it all belongs together. But I'm not trying to make it just look like it was beat to death with a hammer. I don't think that serves any purpose at all. Just kind of want to take the new off of it, so to speak. So it isn't smooth and pristine. I think that's pretty good. Let's try and get it fairly straight because the next thing we need to do is start at this end and start scrolling. And I'm on a fairly tight spiral, maybe about four or five inches round. And we'll see how much of this material that uses up. So we'll just start at the end. We'll get a little lighter weight hammer with a little bit more control here. And this is a very tight or tiny delicate piece on the end so be careful to not kink it there. Also if you're working in a solid fuel forge be very careful not to burn that. This is just a good exercise to see if you can keep 
either a consistent opening of the scroll, which typical scrolls do, or in this one, I'm going to try and keep that same space throughout. So I want this one a little bit tighter than your typical scroll, and I do want it to be round. So I'm just going to keep taking little heats and working that, and hopefully we can get this to behave and do a good job of it. Just keep turning it up where you can see it. When you get into the heavier material, this gets a little bit easier. It doesn't bend and kink quite so much. And the evenness of your taper makes a big difference. If your taper's got thin spots or thick spots, it will bend more at the thin spots and it will bend less at the thick spots. You can see this is a little straight through here. So if I hammer here, I'm bending that. If I hammer here, I'll bend this up here. So it's kind of hard on its side, but you can see how that kind of refines that, and then you can work down a little bit. And if you end up making it too small, a pair of these scrolling pliers or round nose tongs can really help correct some things. But try to do it without these if you can. Just repeatedly hitting in the same spot generally will result in problems. This also wouldn't hurt if you could cool this off, but as I say, this stuff does get kind of hard and I don't want to crack it. So I'm just dealing with the fact that it needs some little adjustments here and there to keep it even. And you could also do a similar hook and roll this up tight so it touches. And that would actually be easier to do. I'm resorting to these pliers way more than I would like to be. Just the inertia of working back here seems to throw this center element back out of proportion almost every heat. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And learning to manipulate things with bending forks and scroll tongs isn't a bad skill either. People always ask where these came from. These are referred to as electrician's pliers oftentimes. The blacksmith suppliers call them scrolling pliers. And I've been able to find these both at Centaur Forge and Blacksmith's Depot. Let's see if we can avoid getting it too hot this time. So maybe we'll have to do a project with a lot more scrolls. I need a lot more practice just just making scrolls and things like this would go a little bit smoother, but I think that's as wrapped up as we can get. I'm running out of material here and I still need to make a hook. I want to bend this out so that it's a straight line right up through the center of the scroll. So let's see if we can get a couple of scroll forks to behave in here. We want something like that. We can close now close this up a little bit. It's another good place for these. And that's kind of what I'm going for there. This fairly straight line right up through the top of the hook there. And all that is is ornament. That's just decoration. It does nothing else for the, the hook. We're not going to hang it by that or anything else. So the next thing I want to do is come back to this other end. 
And I do want to put a place to hang it. I'll use a ball punch right here and here to make some spots for some screw holes. I'll drop the ball into the hardy hole there so it doesn't deform it. Although we have plenty of time to straighten it if it does. I'm going to put this way up here by the bin to start with. By doing this dimple, it's going to spread it out widthwise and leave a little thin spot so that when we drill it, which for a small hole for this size hook, I think I will drill it, we're just taking a little material out so we're not significantly weakening the structure of the hook. Plus the dimple is a very interesting ornamental feature. This is deforming enough that ball is no longer touching the anvil anyways. And if you put a round head screw in here, these dimples make a really nice place for that. It kind of looks like you riveted the thing to the wall. So that's really all that needs. I'll straighten that out. Now let's make a hook out of that. Hopefully I've got a nice isolated heat here so I don't bend the hook where I don't want to. Looks like it's working pretty well. I think I'm going to want to bend that up a little bit more so I'll take a little longer heat back up into this area a little bit. It's real important not to have any heat up here where the screw holes are because that is thinner and it will be really easy to mess that up. That's not bad. Let's go to the horn and clean it up a little bit. That's pretty good. Now, as usual, I will put some close up pictures of the finished hook at the very end of the video, and I will start that little set of close ups with a picture of the hook that inspired this, the one that's hanging on the wall at Proto's Pizza. I just went through my phone and looked at some old pictures. I do have a picture of it. And this one is considerably different, but still inspired by that hook. This one's got a little bit of whimsy. I think if you did some of these left and some of these right, they might look really good hanging on a wall. Maybe some bigger scrolls, smaller scrolls. It could really have kind of a hypnotic effect or maybe a 60s psychedelic sort of effect with a whole bunch of different scrolls and maybe some of them are a little oval shaped and some of them round and who knows, let your imagination go, have some fun with the idea. This one will probably end up on the Etsy shop. I'm not sure I have anywhere in the shop or the house for a series of hooks like this, but who knows, I'll look around. Janet may fall in love with it, in which case we'll find a place to hang it. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to make a financial contribution to the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, have fun, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you for the next one.